little late. <laughs> okay, moving along. <laughs> I'm here. I'd like to introduce our speaker today. His name is Michael Weitzman, and he is a memorable, maximum, impact awareness speaker. Hopefully we'll know what that is after he speaks to us. Michael? Thank you very much. I'm going to do a little bit of house cleaning first. I'm going to move this down. Turn it off, please. Oh, wait, wait. Right on the panel. What's on top? Just like this? Our? No. Right, right, right. Put that down. Turn, turn it off. There you go. Okay. Now speak. Now I can speak. Put down. Right there. There you go. All right. Good job. I'm going to just move a little bit over here and get everything ready where I need to go. Okay. Okay. My name is Michael Weitzman, and I'm here to just show you some stuff that I uh, brought with me, and hopefully uh, you'll like it. I have my uh, the coffee mug. I don't know if you see that. I also have, most importantly, my phone with me. I got my phone. I got my water. I brought my sandwich with me. I got my can of soda. I got my racing gloves. I got my brush. Uh, I got my shaver with me. Uh, my toothbrush. Uh, I got my lipstick. Don't say anything. I got my nail polish. I got my lip balm. Oh, it's amazing. I got my medicine or drugs. Uh, I have my alcohol. I need that. I have my cigarettes because <laughs> I smoke. I got my pad and my, my pen and pad. It's amazing. got my GPS with me that I, oh, it's amazing. I use that. You, you leave this. I have my CD player, also my radio that I use. DVD play. Oh, I got my DVD. I got my map. I got my book. And I'm telling you right now, I got my newspaper. You know where I'm going, everybody? You're driving. I'm going driving. No. Here's my point, people. I'm a motivational, inspirational speaker. And what I'm doing, I'm on a mission right now. It's not just speaking to rotaries. I speak to chambers. I'm speaking to high school. Because I do believe with my situation that happened to me, it will make a difference in other people's lives. All I want to do, from when you leave here today, you might remember a little bit of what I said. So it will make a difference in your lives. And really, what I want to do is just prevent, help prevent accidents, and save lives. That simple. Tough job, but I'm starting it, and it's going well. Uh, because I don't like all of these distractions. Now, these are just distractions. We also have other things. We have <coughs> hydroplaning. You have basically fog. You have sun glare. You can go on to road rage. That's a big one. The tailgating that goes on all the time. Uh, there's many, many things that are going on. But really, the situation is, why am I doing this? Does anyone have any idea why I'm doing this? The reason why I'm doing this is, is really about five years ago. Uh, I was having my two girls in the car. We were leaving. I had a second home in Pennsylvania. We were driving home. Everything's fine. There's about a half an inch of snow on the ground. Big deal. I went along the tracks of the car, you know, the man-made tracks the cars made. I stayed right there so I wouldn't go anywhere. I had my hands on the wheel. My eyes were on the road. Wasn't doing anything. Everything was fine. And all of a sudden, I skidded from, I got off a little bit of the snow, and it skidded, went about 180 backwards into a tree. But before I hit the tree, for six seconds, I had no idea what was going to happen. Then all of a sudden, bang, I went right into the tree. The car was total, like an accordion. My, my daughter was in the front. I was also obviously in the front. Everything was fine with us. I looked at my daughter, and I said, she was 11 at the time. And I said, are you okay? And this is why I'm doing this. My daughter turned around, and I saw, I swear, it looked like her brain and blood was gushing out. At that moment, she went to me and said, Dad, am I okay? I said, you're fine. I lied, got out of the car, and screamed as loud as I could scream, get her the blank out of here now. Ambulance took her, they pried her out of the car, put her on the gurney, and then before she was about to be airlifted to a Lehigh, Pennsylvania, we went to a different hospital. The last words my daughter said was, I'm scared. And at that moment, I did not know for three hours if my daughter was alive or dead. And then basically at that, the time came, she's fine. 
She's mentally, physically, emotionally perfect. She had 45 stitches behind her head. The point I'm making, people, is not about the accident per se or what happened to me. You might be able to relate because things might have happened to you or the people you know. And I'm not, shouldn't, I shouldn't be here right now. I'm telling you right now. It was over. And I'm very lucky I'm here because it's given me the presence to make a difference in everybody's lives that I speak to right here and others that I'm going to because I'm not, I'm not stopping with this. Um, the situation right now is, like I said, there's many other types of distractions. I just hit some of them. And I'm telling you, statistics and the laws are a joke. You heard about the laws re regarding texting and driving, which you know is the biggest problem right now. But do you know, have any idea what the real biggest problem with access to death really in this world, in the United States is? Does anyone know? Drinking and driving is still blows everybody away. The reason you don't know that because you hear texting and driving, texting and driving, texting and driving. Texting and driving is moving up quick. Remember, last year there was over 5.5 million accidents in the United States. Isn't that amazing? And it, it just, it's just incredible. And the, st the stats I have even for that, it, it's, it, it, it's just, it boggles my mind. It really just boggles my mind. Uh, the other situation right now is most of the stuff that happens is driver behavior that's going in the car. So I come up with my own idea, and this is what I've basically been doing. I call it, I'm not going to stop everybody in this room to do the three things that I'm recommending to do. It's called EMH. You never heard it before, and hopefully this becomes a national thing. Mm -hmm. That's how much I want to do this. I even got a trademark on it because I believe... EMH is what it's going to be all about. And what EMH is about is simple stuff. It's called when you get in the car, you think of my idea, you think of me, and you think of EMH. And what that is is very simple. Just keep your eyes on the road, your mind on your driving, and your hands on the wheel. And this is the wheel from my car that got smashed. So the point I'm trying to make is EMH. And what's really amazing about EMH, I go a step further with that. Watch this. Eyes on the road. Eyes and road. What's the first letter of eyes and the first letter of road? What do you get? E R. That's right. We don't want that. Mind on your driving. You want mind in your driving. What's the first letter of mind and the first letter of driving? M D. You don't want that. But what you do want when you're driving and in your most amazing, beautiful life is hands on the wheel, H and W. Probably not going to get this, but this is what you should want. You want to be happy and you want to be well. And that's really what I'm trying to do with my speaking uh, engagements that I'm doing right now is that I can't stop you guys. You're going to be, and what's the biggest problem, you're probably asking, what happened to my accident? I had my, I had my eyes on the road and my hands on the wheel. So how did I get, how did I almost die? Because my mind was distracted about the you know, upcoming divorce, about my job situation. You guys can relate. You guys are all driving and thinking of every little thing that's going on. And I'm trying to get people, keep your mind on your driving. If you listen to radio, listen to radio. I can't stop you from doing that. I can't stop you from taking a Dunkin' Donuts or whatever you're going to be doing. But the point is I can help prevent accidents and save lives. And this is what I'm trying to do. So um, the other thing that's going on is, uh, like I said, there's, last year there's 5.5 million accidents in the United States. Uh, regarding cars that were with texting and cell phone, there was 1.6 million out of the 5.5. Uh, how many cars, uh, how many accidents do you think were for DWI? No. There were many. Uh, and there was over 34,000 deaths just in 2012 for drinking and driving. And uh, let me tell you, it's amazing this way. Look at, a, look at a football field. You ever see a football field? You see a football field? If you take this, where is that little bugger? This, I call this, this is not a smartphone, by the way. Okay? This is a dumb phone. Okay? It's a stupid phone. Because, or, or maybe the person that's using it is, is that. But the point I'm trying to make with this supposedly smart phone is that people are really using this 
more than anything else, like it or not. This should go really into a glove. Good luck for the teenagers. And most accidents and deaths, you know, is between 16 and 21. It's outrageous. Uh, and, it's, and this is great. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road when texting. When traveling 55 miles, that's the length of a football field. In other words, you're going like this. One, two, three, four, five, and you're, you're going a football field. You're not looking. You're not looking. And what really bothers me is that I see it around me. And I see them, and I, I pull down windows and stop it. I mean, I'm really telling them. I mean, because they might hit me. See, I'm worried about two things. I'm worried about everyone in this room and everybody I know or don't know that you might be able to control a little bit of your actions by, do, by just doing the EMH and keeping your eyes on the road, your mind your driving, and your hands on the wheel. And you're not going to do these things. The problem is the people that are outside of us still might crash into you and you're dead tomorrow or dead later. And that bothers me. That bothers me. So what I'm doing, like I said, um, I can get into so many type of statistics that will blow you away. It, it just, it's just meaningless. The point is we got major problems on the road. Uh, the laws. You know what the law is now for texting when driving? Does anyone know? It went up last year. You know what it is? It's $150 and five points to your license. You actually think that's going to stop somebody. Five points is a lot. Well, it's five points is a lot. So what? So even if they don't have the license, they're still going to drive. They'll drive without a license. It's, they're not, people are just going to do whatever they want. It won't matter. It won't really matter. So, uh, you know, 20% of injuries, crashes in 2009, was revolved, had to do with distraction when driving. It, it just... 60% of drivers use cell phones when they're driving. It's, it's just, and let me explain something to you. How many times do you have your Bluetooth, okay? You have basically uh, the wire or maybe the console of your new car.